Okay, let's take a look at the first fundamental theorem of calculus. <coughs> what it says is that if we find the antiderivative and evaluate it at each endpoint, so the upper boundary minus the antiderivative at the lower boundary, we're going to find that area between them. So let's practice it. What would be the antiderivative of x squared? Well, I know it'd have to have been x cubed, but usually we put that there, so it's one-third x cubed. If we test that, 3 times one-third would be 1 x squared. It works. Plus c. Let's see what happens. We're going to evaluate it from 3 to 0. This notation just means I'm going to plug in 3. I'm going to subtract. What if I plugged in 0? So 1 third, 3 cubed plus c minus <coughs> 1 third, 0 cubed plus c. Let's see, 3 cubed is 27. That's going to be 9 plus c minus 0 minus c, because I'd have to distribute the, zero, the negative there. What happens to the c's? They subtract it out. What do you think is going to happen every time? Well, let's look at the next one. So, we can split this up into two integrals. We're going to take the integral, um, the antiderivative of 2x. That one's easy. That's x squared. And what would give me cosine? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, so this needs to be negative sine x. And we're going to evaluate from pi, or negative pi to pi. So I need to plug in pi. Whoops, I forgot the plus c, didn't I? Plus c. Uh, if I plug in pi, pi squared minus sine of pi plus c minus, let's plug in negative pi. Well, let's clean this up a little bit. I see this is, this doesn't have anything in front of the parentheses, so I can remove those. Well, what is the sine of pi? I should have replaced that, right? Sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0 plus c minus negative pi squared is going to be pi squared. Negative negative is going to be a positive. Sine of negative pi, well, that's also <coughs> going to be 0. And then minus c. Whoa. Pi squared minus pi squared, zero, c minus c, we actually get zero. Next one, one over x, that's easy, that's natural log x, minus, to get 4x, so it's going to be x squared, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Double check. Natural log x, the derivative is 1 over x. Derivative of 2x squared is 4x. It works. We're going to evaluate this from 1 to e. So, plugging in e. Natural log e minus 2e squared plus c. Minus. Plug in 1. Natural log 1 <coughs> minus 2 times 1 squared plus c. So what is the natural log of e? 1 
minus 2e squared plus c. What's the natural log of 1? Well, that's 0. And then I'd have minus negative, so plus 2 times 1 squared minus c. So we have a 1 plus a 2, that's 3, minus 2e squared. And what happens to the c's? Every time the c's are going to cancel out. Three to the x. Okay, so the antiderivative of three to the x is going to be. Well, let's see if we can remember how. Huh, what is the derivative of three to the x? Well, the derivative of three to the x is natural log three times three to the x. So if I'm, so that would be a d dx. So if I'm taking the antiderivative, it'd be one over natural log three times three to the x plus we're going to add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent plus c evaluated from one to two. Now, do I really need to worry about the c anymore? Well, if I'm going to be actually be evaluating this, they're going to subtract out anyway. So I'm going to be extra lazy. Got 1 over natural log 3 times 3 squared, because we're plugging in 2 first, plus 1 fourth, 3 to the fourth, minus 1 over natural log 3, 3 to the first power, plus one fourth times one to the fourth power. I don't need to worry about my c's because they're gonna cancel out. This is gonna be nine over natural log three plus 81 over four minus three natural log three plus, whoops, forgot to distribute the negative, one fourth. Now this is a safe stop point. You can stop here. So I would. So what do we do if the definite integral requires the anti-chain rule? To be honest, I don't use the u substitution very often unless I absolutely have to, um, even though it, it, it will work all the time. I find the pattern method a lot quicker and easier. Um, so if we use u substitution for this one, the innermost would be u. So I come over the side. u is 4x minus 2. cubed. Oops, no, I just want it to be that. That would mean I'd have the integral of u cubed. Now see, I'll be honest, I disagree with this method, so I'm just going to show you the way I would do it. Okay, du is going to equal du dx equals 4. I go back to my original integral of 1 to 2 of 4x minus 2 cubed. They forgot their dx. Oh. If I rearrange this, it's going to be du over 4 equals dx. So I'm not going to evaluate it yet until I've done the antiderivative.
See, I don't actually do the substitution until I've finished and I've redone the sub, my U substitution. Um, whoops, I forgot. I mean, I was going to do my substitution now. Sorry about that. I'd already taken the antiderivative. By going ahead and resubstituting in your original U, um, now you can just plug in 2 for x minus plugging in 1 for x. So 1 fourth, 4 times 2 minus 2 to the fourth. Don't need to worry about the C. 1 fourth, 4 times 1 minus 2 to the fourth power. 8 minus 2 is 6 to the fourth. Divided by 4 is 324 minus 4 minus 2 is 2 to the fourth is 16 minus 4 is 320. The pattern method, I know this is going to be 4x minus 2 to the 4th divided by the derivative of the inside. I find the pattern method a lot faster than u substitution. We come out with the same antiderivative. And then we'd plug in and get exactly the same thing we got there. Let's go through another couple of examples. Okay, so <coughs> maybe we can combine the two. Let's think about what's the innermost function here. Well, sine is being squared. So you Let's make that to be sine. And du would be cosine x dx, right? Mm. I'm liking this idea. That means our integral is of u squared du. Well, the antiderivative of that is going to be u cubed with a one-third. Okay. One-third sine cubed x plus c evaluated from pi over 2 to 0. I do not need to write that c anymore. One-third sine cubed of pi over 2 minus one-third sine cubed at zero. So what is sine of pi over two? Well, that's one. One cubed is one, so I get one-third. Sine of zero is zero. I just get one-third. I think I like this idea. So, innermost function would be x squared plus 4. du would be 2x dx. But we have a 3 there. Uh oh. Let's see what we can do about that. Integral of three x. So I'm gonna leave it there for a second. Let's change this to dx equals du over two x. So we're gonna be dividing by the derivative of that inner function. So we've got du over two x. Clean up a little bit. 
x's will cancel. 3 over 2, 1 over u, du. Well, the antiderivative of 1 over u is going to be natural log of u with a 3 half. 3 halves, natural log of x squared plus 4 plus c, I don't need to keep writing that, evaluated from 1 to 2. So if I plug in 2 first, natural log of 2 squared plus 4 minus 3 halves, natural log of 1 squared plus 4. 3 halves, natural log of 8 minus 3 halves, natural log of 5. This is a safe stop. E tangent x over cosine squared x. So let's remember, I'm going to flip back in my book, what was the derivative of a tangent? Oh, this is going to be nice. Okay, so let's make our u be tangent x. That means du is the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared x. What is secant squared? Oh, that's 1 over cosine squared, which is already there. So, we have the integral of e to tangent x, and we already have cosine squared x dx at the end. So we really have e to the u du. So the antiderivative is just going to be e to the u plus c. So e to the tangent x evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. e to the tangent of pi over 4 minus e to the tangent of 0. Well, tangent of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And tangent of 0 is 0. So e to the 0, which is just 1. 